Hello and welcome back to my tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. In the previous videos I've shown you how to rig and animate a character and set up a scene so go check those out if you want. But this is a very special video in the tutorial series because it is the last one I started this series over two years ago, so thank you so much to everybody who has joined me throughout this journey and supported the channel. I'll be talking a little bit more about the future of this channel towards the end of the video. So let's finish this. Okay, so in the last video we finished animating and now we need to export the animation. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's always a good idea to have separate scene files for the different shots in your animation. This keeps the file sizes smaller, it improves performance and it's less destructive so that if you do something wrong in this scene it's not going to affect all your other shots. In this case, because it's a very short test animation. I've done everything within this scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to export as an image sequence, which essentially breaks up all the individual frames into their own images. You can also export as a movie. So if we click this right node here, which controls all the export information, you can see we've got the image sequence here that you can tick on and off. And then you've got the movie here that you can also tick on and off. You can do a QuickTime movie and an MP4. However, we're not going to do that because we want to maintain as much image quality as possible. So I'm going to export those raw images and then import that into a video editing software. We're going to be using DaVinci Resolve, which is free. Toon Boom Harmony is not an editing software. So you'll never want to have multiple scenes and multiple shots all in the timeline and then just export the movie. You want to export the different shots in Toon Boom and then you will be compiling those shots together in the editing software. But we just want the images and then we're going to worry about all the sound and stuff in the editing software, such as the voiceover, sound effects, and if you've got music, music as well. We're not going to be doing any compositing. So compositing would be, you know, if you've got any like fancy effects or lighting. Toon Boom is capable of doing some nice compositing effects. You can use Adobe After Effects as well, but we don't really need to do it for our animation. So yeah, we just need our PNG files. So we're going to untick that. So I'm just going to leave it as it is PNG color. If you did want to have a transparent background, you would select color and alpha, but we haven't got any transparency in our background. So we don't need to do that. Um, by default, it gets saved in your scene frames folder. So this is our scene here. And then you can see you've got a frames folder there, which is currently empty. You can change the location if you want for that. So all of these settings, we can just keep as they are and you can change the name of it if you want. If you tick that box as well, that would just export the QuickTime movie um, with your images in the same folder. So that can be useful, you know, if you just want to preview it, see how it looks. So the next thing I like to do is I like to come into the scene settings and just increase the resolution because sometimes with the character, especially if you've got thinner lines, if you have like overlays in your lines, some parts of those lines are going to appear thicker than others. There are things you can do to minimize it. For example, you know, this arm, I've got it so that this overlay is only masked to this part of the arm. So you can see that if it wasn't, that part would appear thicker, as you can see, like that. And that's just because this is a bitmap image when it's rendered. You know, if you're in like an art software like Photoshop and you have a line, if you were to duplicate that layer multiple times, then the line would appear thicker because of the anti-aliasing, which is where these edges like fade off. So, you know, if you're putting the same image underneath it, the opacity of that pixel is going to get darker and therefore it appears thicker because with the overlay, there's essentially the line and you've got the overlay on top of it. So 
sometimes there are going to be slight inconsistencies with the lines. So a workaround for it is, like I said, cutting the overlays onto other layers as much as possible. But what you can do is if you increase the resolution, so let's take ours up to 4K, it's going to make the image bigger, obviously, because it's a bigger resolution, but it's going to add more pixels. So those inconsistencies are going to be less obvious. And that will allow you to export in a higher resolution as well if you want. We are going to have our final animation as 1080. So the PNGs are going to be in 4K and we're going to scale those down in our editing software. So now we can go over to file, export. And if you're just rendering as a movie, you just click that movie. But if you're rendering the PNG sequence, we're going to click render right nodes. We want to go from frame 20 to frame 900 and that's where we've set our playable area. So we're going to do 90. And remember when you are doing higher resolutions as well the rendering time is going to be a lot longer so just keep that in mind especially if you've got like a, you know, a laptop or your processing power isn't that great. And then we just press OK and then we wait. Okay, so now if we have a look at the frames folder in our scene, we've got all of those frames exported out. So we're going to take these frames and we're going to import them into DaVinci Resolve. Before we do that though, I do just want to export the audio. So in this scene folder as well, we've got an audio file. So I'm going to put the audio in there. Frame 20 to 900. We're going to merge all audio tracks going to export that but I'm not going to use that audio I'm not sure if it's lower quality than than the source file but we're just going to use it as a reference so that we can place the source file over the top in DaVinci Resolve so let's go over to DaVinci Resolve so we're going to click untitled project and the the tab that we want to be on is the editing tab here this is where our movie will be and this is where the footage will be this is where the files are so we're going to head over to the frames and we're just going to take that frames folder and simply drag it in and then it becomes a video file so they won't all be separated they'll all merge into one file um i think sometimes if you just start the software it doesn't automatically become a sequence like that so i think the way you get around that is by going to this first tab here and then frame display mode, and then you have to tick sequence. So we've got our sequence now, and then we simply drag it into our timeline. I think we're actually missing a few frames at the beginning there. Oh, I think it's because we started from frame 90. Yeah, that's our problem there. We put, we put 90 instead of 20. So we're gonna do 20 to 89. Those are the ones that we're missing. So let's try that again. So there we go, we've got the new image there got our audio and we're going to navigate to the source files so let's put that into the timeline and then we can put our audio file here so if you want to make more tracks you can add tracks just add three and three and then we'll match up our audio to this i think that looks good can get rid of that and then we can put those up there you can rename this like main as well this can be vo for voiceover now like i said this is just one sequence so if you had multiple scenes multiple shots you would just bring those all in here and it would just be a case of matching those up if you want to cut a file you can press b and that will slice sections for you. So say you wanted to get rid of a section, you would just press B to slice it, press A to go to the select tool, and you can press delete, and that will move everything down the timeline. If you just wanna delete it without pushing everything down, you can press backspace instead of the delete button. So this is where you, know, you can kind of play with the timing a little bit in between shots. You might need to trim off the beginning or the end, Oh boy, what a beautiful day. Looks like the apples are ripe for the picking. So we, we've got some basic transition effects here on the left. You've got your video transitions and your audio transitions. So we could do a cross dissolve at the beginning. And also you can zoom in by holding Alt 
and scrolling up and then you could just drag that onto the timeline so there's a little bit of a fade there. I think what we'll do for oh. that is we'll just we want to lengthen this a little bit so you know we can shorten it by dragging it that way but you can't lengthen it because there's no frames left so what you can do we're going to do a freeze frame by just cutting the end there and then pasting it here and then we can right click this change clip speed freeze frame chain so now you can lengthen that as much as you want and that will just stay there okay so let's add some sound effects so let's just do um the door slam for now so that happens about here so we'll put it in there and i've just got this door slam sound effect now you can record your own if you want i've got mine online i used epidemic sound and they provide um, sound effects for you to use. You have to pay a membership, but it's it's really affordable. Um, we are going to do a bunch. I'll probably do some sort of ambient birds tweeting and nature sounds. We'll do the tree shaking, the apple crunch as well. I'll just show you how to do one example because it's the same. Um, so yeah, I've dragged that in from here. Make sure that all of your sound effects and all of your files are where you want them to be before editing because these files are actually linked directly to those files. For example, if I went to the folder location of these and deleted them in there, they would no longer show up in this file. So that's something to take note of. So let's drag in our slam sound. I'm just going to put it on the audio layer underneath. So this one could be SFX1. And we've got a couple of samples here, so let's delete those. And then we can line this up. So you can see it snaps to the doodah here. So if you don't want it to snap, you can just click this magnet button and then you can just put it in like that. So now it sounds like this. A couple of things I wanted to mention before we go ahead and export is make sure your project frame rate matches your sequence frame rate. So in Tomb Boom Harmony, we set our FPS as 24, and that's the default for DaVinci Resolve. If it doesn't match the project frame rate, a prompt will come up asking you if you want to change it. So come into these project settings and just make sure you've changed the frame rate to match your animation frame rate. In this case, we didn't have to do that because it was already the same. If there is a case where you need to change the frame rate of your footage to match your project settings, you can right click your frames, clip attributes, and then you can change it there. Another thing I wanted to mention as well, if you want to link your sound with your footage, you can right click both of them and then click link clips. So what that means is every time you make an edit on this video layer, it will also apply that to the audio as well. And if you move that video, it's gonna keep it linked together. So that can be useful for when you're editing your clips. Um, also, if you wanna change your some of the settings and the resolution of your file, you can come down to the bottom right, press this cog here. And this is where you can change your resolution. So you've got all your shots in, you've got all your sound effects in, now it's time to export. So let's go over to the export tab here. So the, these are the only ones that we wanna worry about for the time being. And we're gonna export it as an MP4. We're gonna give it a name, test animation. We'll give it a location. So like I said, ours is 1080, 24 frames. And then we can add it to the render queue which will make it appear over here. And then we can just render that out. So I'll add the rest of the sound effects in, and this is what the final animation looks like. Oh boy, what a beautiful day. Looks like the apples are ripe for the picking. Yummo. So there we have it. 
over two years we finally come to the end of the final video of my tutorial series. I just want to thank everybody so much for all your support and wonderful comments and checking out the videos. It's truly appreciated. If you would like to support the channel, you can like and subscribe. I hope you found this tutorial series helpful and it's allowed you to create some characters and some animations. Feel free to tag me in anything that you do create. I would love to see it. So now that we've finished this tutorial series, that's it, I'm out of here. This channel has come to an end. No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna do like a full uh, channel update video, I think, and talk about some plans for the future of this channel. But I am going to continue doing tutorials. They're just gonna be more short form tutorials based on some of the stuff that I've covered in this tutorial series. I might go back and revisit some stuff as well um, because I have learned some things while doing this tutorial series. Um, and I do have a backlog of videos I wanna get done. And that is how you make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. See you next time.